Okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, we have a short break after the first uh, presentation <coughs> by Professor uh, Quadis. Now um, we come to the second uh, distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. James Kim, um, head of sales and solution department of UPS in Korea. Now, um, Dr. Kim is going to give us an overview of how the industry in um, Korea is changing to cope with the COVID-19 disruption. And probably he will give us an example using the vaccine distribution to see how we can churn out um, smart logistics solutions to cope with the uh, disruptions. So thanks very much, uh, Dr. Kim, over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yep, so uh, first of all, uh, thank you for giving me opportunity uh, to introduce about the logistics during, during the COVID-19. Uh, this is the first slide you can see. Uh, but mostly when we present about the logistics, then we some we post some of the pictures, you know, showing about the forecast or view of the logistics. And I don't know how you feel of this picture on the top of the, this slide. You can see only few, you know, the freight pre freighters and not seeing uh, you know, the ocean ship, ships, but the containers are stuck in on the field. This is the real situation in this in this period by COVID-19. Then, you know, we cannot really move by the regions. Even, um, you know, my family uh, used to live in New Zealand, you know, until last month, and I haven't seen my family for two weeks, uh, two years. So this was, this is the real situation in COVID-19 for the people move and the cargo move, uh, then, you know, we are facing a lot of challenges on the coast, coast and also the supplying the goods to the people. So, you know, I, I will go through more details on the trading and uh, the logistics, then, you know, also introduce about the, one of the experience during the COVID-19. So can you move on to the next slide? Uh, so uh, I have three agenda for today. The first one is the trend in the import and export uh, trading since uh, the logistics is pretty much you know related to the trading you know uh, the flowers, meaning uh, from the origin to destination and distribution and the inventory management that uh, drive the logistics industry. Uh, and the secondly, uh, I will introduce about the supply and demand demand in the logistics, especially for the ocean freight and the air freight. Uh, there are a few factors we consider for the expansion or controlling the space and you know the supply to the market, uh, including the cost. And the last, lastly, you know, I will show uh, I will introduce about the one showcase. Uh, I was very lucky that, you know, I had a chance to the manage the action project in Korea. Then uh, I will introduce, you know, what factors are very uh, are import, important in this area. Then, you know, how we uh, need to uh, manage that, you know, the industry where. Then also, you know, the area we need to invest for the future. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this, this is the trend of uh, 2021, the first half, since, you know, it is already 2022, but there is no uh, certain data of the second half year. So the regarding the first half year of 2021, uh, the export for the five months was 248 billion, then that, that is a 23%, 30 point, 4% you know, increase uh, versus the same period of the last year. So meaning uh, even, you know, some of the area are suffering by the economic changes and, you know, you know, a lot of people are losing their job. But when we look at the logistic fields, this is the growing market. Uh, even though some of the area, you know, we foresee that the, uh, the trade will be decreased and the logistics are, you know, the uh, uh, growing the uh, revenue and profit by the increase on rate. But uh, when we look at the real field, 
even the trading has been increased a lot that in fact the logistic field you know the business growth so especially well, when i look at the korea uh, we export a lot to china and the united states and also europe as well then of course you know we have the we have some of the guests from the you know oceania and you know we also see a lot of demand uh, for export from korea to the australia and the new zealand as well so uh, we include australia and new zealand as ASEAN. So we see the 13.3% uh, of the increase to, you know, ASEAN, uh, ASEAN you know, uh, the region the trading growth. Move on to the next slide. So uh, when, you get the, when you look at the number, uh, uh, the COVID-19 was started from 2019. Uh, of course, uh, it was, you know, uh, the... Uh, how, how, I'm sorry, you know, the COVID-19 was started from, it was just started from November, but however, the impact of the logistics and the trading was just started, started from the 2020. And the comparison between 19 and 20, uh, there was slight decline for the export and import was also declined. However, uh, you know, after we just you know familiarized with the COVID-19, the economy and the social life, you know, getting normal in the US, then uh, the trading has been increased a lot. So the trend wise, uh, even uh, comparison from January to the May, we see the trade increase, especially for the export as well. So when you look at the number, the increase was a 20. And that, that, that also, uh, uh, when we look at the field, then see more increase on the high tech, the semiconductor and the automotive, and also uh, the medical items, especially for the, you know, test keys and COVID, you know, items, you know, we export a lot from Korea to worldwide. And even today, uh, I see a thousand pallets, uh, you know, stacking in the origin side to distribute to the, uh, the global for the test kit, then uh, also we are importing a lot for the vaccine and also healthcare items as well. So we do uh, we do a lot of you know the positive trend in the logistic field by uh, in this period as well. And move on to next slide, please. And this is the export trend by region. So. Uh, the U.S. used to be the number one trading uh, trading lane from the Korea. Uh, however, starting from 2012, uh, the China became a number one. And also, we are seeing a lot of uh, the growth to the Vietnam because you know the uh, many manufacturers uh, are moving from China to Vietnam these days. Uh, it's been you know five years then. Vietnam is one of the biggest country for the trading. But in the overall wise, uh, except the Middle East, we see uh, the trading grows, especially in 2021, January to May. Move on to the next slide, please. Yeah. And then uh, I will show about the trend of the supply, uh, supply and demand, uh, demand in the logistics. Uh, I made in you know, uh, four areas uh, in trend. The first one is the fare, the rate. Uh, the rate has been increased a lot, especially for the container. Uh, but however, when we see the supply, um, the container ship has not been increased a lot. But however, uh, it's not only for the supply and demand issue, but also uh, from the Asia to US, uh, we do have we do have a lot a lot of uh, the ground handling issue in the Long Beach. Then the container ship the supply uh, it, uh, is stuck in, in the ocean side. Then uh, uh, the supply is uh, much smaller than the demand. Even uh, I mean even there was some you know, growth, uh, but however 
the de demand of the container ship uh, has been dramatically increased, then the shipping company is not uh, uh, providing that the enough uh, the supply to the market. But it's not it's, it, it's not kind of the play game with the trading company, but because uh, everyone knows that uh, when we plan to invest for the ship increase, then it takes you know, two or three years. So meaning uh, we, we noticed that uh, last year, but if the shipping company, they ordered the new uh, new ships, then the supply will be, you know, end of this year or, you know, sometimes next year. So meaning uh, there is no supply increase, but uh, still demand is pretty much high by the trading increase. So that drives uh, the rate increase in the market. So uh, it used to be around the 2000 US dollar for the 40 feet container from the Korea to US. Uh, but now it's over eight eight thousand dollars. But that is uh, the sp uh, that is the price agreement with the large company. But in the real market, now the buying from the shipping company is 15,000 and the selling to the customer is over 20,000. 20, so uh, at least five to seven times, you know, the price increase in the air, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in the ocean uh, industry. Then that drives to the air freight market. So air freight market also has been increased. Uh, of course, the uh, supply for the air freight uh, is decreased by the belly cargo, belly space decrease. Uh, it's because the passenger flight is not operating to the, each country. Uh, but when we see the air freighter space, it's been increased a lot. But uh, in poorer for space supply, the air freight also has uh, less supply than the demand. So uh, when we look at the price of the air, it's almost five times increased as well. So compare comparison between the air and ocean, the ocean freight increase is much more higher than the increase from the air. That drive, uh, even though uh, some of the volume is it, in is decreased by lesion, but the fair increase is uh, it's, it's not what we expected. Then you know it's even today the rate increase you know pretty much high. Then uh, some of people say it might be uh, normal by middle of this year, but uh, the carriers is not planning to supply more and the lower the rate. So uh, if we consider the people, we we might uh, we might expect you know the situation getting normal and better, and you know we do not need to wear the mask. But when we look at the logistics, there's still it's very good trend. I mean. We cannot really tell tell the people, but this, this is a real situation in this you know, in uh, in this period. So uh, supply, we expect around a four percent in, uh, increase. But uh, the forecast for the freight rate is, you know, we, uh, I see staying in the high uh, range. Can you move on to next slide? Okay. So this is the ocean market trend, uh, as I explained. The second quarter of the last year, container freight index has been increased. Uh, uh, this content say the significant increase, but we normally say it's un un unexpected and crazy. Then uh, we don't know how much the, uh, how much increase we can see. Even last year, there was some story in the market. Uh, one of the shipping companies, the stock price was started from the two or three dollars. Uh, but now it is uh, it is up to forty to sixty dollars. So the stock price of the shipping company shows the revenue growth and the profit. So uh, that said, 
we we will see a pretty much high rate, you know, uh, the trend of the ocean, uh, the rate in in this year, then also foresee until next year. So now, uh, even you know, we we are not able to really uh, block the space for the coming month. So that that is the real situation in the ocean market. Can you move on to next slide? And this is also the focus of the global economic growth rate and the container traffic volume. So uh, as you can see, uh, the container supply uh, sometimes has been dec decreased uh, last year, and you know we increased a little bit more. But however, uh, compare with compare with uh, the demand from the trading, and it's not good enough to cover all the demand. Uh, even the report from the you know Kita, the Korea, uh, the trading association in Korea. Mm, the last year's the business growth for the trading uh, is the remarkable, and the number one uh, the growth uh, for the last ten years period. Also, the container traffic also you know is back to increase, uh, increased in the last year, but also you know the same trend in, same trend is expected in this year as well. Can you uh, move on to the next slide? And also demand, uh, the demand market trend. So it's not the dramatic changes, but uh, uh, because, because of the, the uh, US uh, the container yard situations, then you know uh, a lot of you know ocean ships are stuck in the in the in the sea. Then uh, the supply of, uh, supply of the shipping is not really feeding all the demand of uh, the uh, demand of uh, the container. Uh, can you move on to next next slide? And this is a uh, supply demand trend. So as of June uh, last year, total number of the container ships uh, was you know fifty. Uh, 5,503 within the 24 1 million TU. So compared to 2018 uh, to 21 June, uh, it was increased to the 4,380 uh, TU. So uh, we have a much uh, increase, but uh, in the normal situation, it doesn't really affect to the rate increase, but now uh, it, it is you know unusual situation. Move on to next slide. And also this is the uh, trend. The so 48 container ships delivered delivered by June 21, which is uh, 500k 36 uh, 500 uh, 536k TEU. Uh, but as I said, when we order ship, you know, container ship, then it takes two or three years to supply. So uh, one concern I have, uh, I think some of you remember 2008 and nine. We have the we have the global economic crisis. Uh, before that, uh, we had you know big business growth. Then a lot of shipping companies they order large ships. Then after. Uh, the economic crisis, then uh, the global trade dropped a lot. So meaning uh, supply has been increased a lot compared to the demand. Then you know, one of the shipping companies Hanjin in Korea, they bankrupt by the issue. So uh, the shipping company is uh, the considering, you know, whether they increase the supply or not. That is one of the reasons that we don't have much uh, enough uh, the container ship supply in this period as well. Uh, move on to next slide. Next slide. So this is this is the uh, this shows the number number of the container 
uh, container increase, uh, even uh, the number of the container ships is being increased, but uh, it's not balancing with the demand and supply. So you can see by in 2023, uh, at least the 2 million of EU, uh, the order being placed. So we expect, uh, we expect, you know, just the shipping speed and then uh, remodeling according to the market situation. Uh, move on to next slide, please. Uh, uh, I, I just explained about the ocean supply, but uh, now I will introduce about the air freight. Uh, when we consider the ocean investment, the first consideration consideration is the GDP. But for the air freight, we see the different, we consider different factors. So number one factor we consider for the air freight is the PMI, PMI uh, numbers, which is the purchase management index. So the if number is over 50, then air demand is increased. So we always, we see, uh, the PMI uh, numbers, you know, uh, by country. So it's over 50, then, you know, we supply more, you know, airspace. Then, of course, the demand and capacity by mm, the, uh, by, uh, by each port, it's been increased in you know, 3.6 year over year uh, in January last year. Then also global air freight capacity growth was decreased, meaning uh, the supply of the, the belly cargo on the passenger flight is decreased. Uh, I tried to search the number of the passenger airspace, but there was no any such kind of report. I foresee around the, around the 20% of uh, uh, the cargo is being moved by the passenger flight. And there was uh, some of the innovation uh, in Korea was placed that we utilize the passenger flight to the air freight. But the, but the problem was if we uh, the utilize the 100 tons, the 747 uh, freighters to, to the freighters. So uh, the 747, uh, the freighters can contain 100 tons, but using the passenger flight, only can contain 20 tons, meaning the carrying same number of tonnes, uh, the rate should be increased five times. So that is pretty much equal to the market rate increase. But uh, as I mentioned, the freighter space has been increased, then the passenger supply only can cover 20% of you know, total freight. So that is the unbalancing. But the, but that is also the area uh, the air carriers are you know uh, air carriers are generating the more revenue and profit. And the recently, the oil price has been increased. So uh, also uh, the my company is charging the the uh, fuel surcharge to the customer based on the air freight rate. But it used to be the 10 to 12 percent, but now we are charging more than 20 percent, meaning uh, the customers are paying, you know, double, uh, 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 dub double of what they are paying uh, before the, you know, COVID-19. And uh, when we look at the uh, the tonnage by areas, the Shanghai Pudong last year uh, increased the 57 percent eight. 7.8% 7, 7 increase, then Hong Kong uh, increased 23.3%. And the Thailand, uh, the Thailand was decreased by 24.3. Uh, so uh, the China business has been increased, but some of the Asian country, the air export, uh, it's been decreased. And uh, when I see the main region, uh, the Hong Kong and Shanghai has a lot of freighters, but the Thailand has less freighters. So supply of 
uh, supply of the space impacted the uh, air, airport tonnage performance as well. And we move on to next slide. So this is the global manufacturing PMI numbers. So Germany, France, the Europe has been increased. And also the global US, the China, uh, of course, the China, uh, it's a bit sensitive. Uh, some of people say the you know COVID nineteen uh, was started from China, and some of people say no. But anyway, uh, the COVID infections has been started from the China, so the PMI numbers in China is not that much higher than the other region. Then uh, the global trading. Uh, in US and the Europe is being increased, so that also impact to the demand of the goods import from Asia to uh, the other country as well. And uh, when we look at the sectors, uh, only the minus growth in Europe is the industrial manufacturer and the consumer goods. So even uh, when I look at the trend in Korea, uh, the uh, online e-commerce company, the high tech, the healthcare, the business uh, are growing very well, but the industrial manufacturers, uh, the business is not that so good. So when I uh, when I look at the reason of the negative growth in the industrial manufacturer is one of the reason is the oil price high because the oil is one of the uh, the main raw material to make uh, to make a goods. And number two is the logistic cost. Since the uh, the percentage of cost uh, for the industrial manufacturer uh, is pretty much higher than, I mean, the logistic cost, logistic cost, uh, uh, logistic cost number of the, uh, the total cost is pretty much higher than other area. So it's about you know over twenty percent in this area, but high tech and has care uh, sometimes it's below one percent, and in average it's about five percent. And move on to next slide. So this is the manufacturer PMI. So number has been uh, declined in the uh, the Asian countries, but. Uh, in the Hong Kong and the global, it's you know it's overgrown. So in overall, the global, uh, the manufacturers uh, in February last year is you know 53.9 percent up to 53.6 percent in January. And move on to next slide, please. And this is the freight market. Uh, demand has been increased and the supply has been increased, but uh, we see by each airport, the airport has more freight freighters and the supply is being increased, but such as the Thailand or some of the Asian, you know, ASEAN countries do not have the freighters, then the demand uh, and supply is being decreased and also demand, uh, but the demand is pretty much high in all the areas. Move on to the next slide. And this is the air cargo tonnage performance by each area. So this is pretty much equal to supply. So China, the export 86.7% increase, then import 27%. And the Thailand, 24% decrease. And the Hong Kong, 23%. But the Singapore, uh, Singapore do not have the uh, do not have a lot of manufacturer, and this is the uh, the hub for the South South Asia, the feeding from the Asian country. So Thailand, Indonesia, those goods, you know, is through the Singapore. So the the actual origin country uh, tonnage is being decreased. So Singapore, the tonnage has been decreased as well. Move on to the next slide. So those are the trend in the trading and the logistics. 
and I see I see some of the uncertainties in the logistic field and the trading field, but especially for the logistic field, uh, in such kind of the crisis, whoever has asset as the you know ocean ship or freighters, they drive the market. So even uh, my company has their own freighters, so we are generating a lot of revenues, but uh, when we see the different the business unit in the logistic field, the carriers are earning a lot of money, but compare in between the you know freight folders and the carriers, the carriers earning uh, I, I cannot compare you know, how much, but uh, just just comparison in num uh, in growth, the carriers growth and the revenue profit growth are pretty much higher than what the freight folders are uh, earning. So that is the real situation in here. Then uh, I will introduce about you know one showcase, which is the vaccine project. Can we move on to the next slide? Uh, this is the situations. Uh, you know the the coronavirus are the large family hundred you know virus that you know usually, I mean you know. Many virus used to be infected to the animals, but uh, you know these are infecting to the people. Then when we see the past, we experienced the SARS in 2002 in China and the MERS in 2012, and that's gone. I mean the SARS has gone. The MERS we still have, but it's very rare. But the coronavirus, uh, it's different from the previous one. So. Last year, March 11, uh, the WHO they declared the uh, the COVID-19 as a global pandemic, and mm, I had a chance. I mean, my my company had a chance to the operate the vaccine project. Then Korea was the first country to import the vaccine in Asia from Europe. Then. Uh, I become the project manager of this vaccine project, so I will share you know how I manage that vaccine project in Korea. Move we'll on to the next slide, please. So, uh, in the pandemic situation, the FDA they only uh, approve uh, the few number of the the back, uh, the uh, few no, few no, few number of uh, you know, entitles, which is about uh, kind of the vaccines or the protein, you know, related, you know, the medicals. So, but however, still uh, not only by the pandemic issues, but the healthcare industry is been growing there and, you know, also high profit area. So that's why uh, a lot of companies are investing uh, the asset or people in the healthcare industry, even uh, the company I just work for uh, started to invest in this field from 2012. Then I I could able to you know handle those kind of you know those, the big project with my company. Move on, then move on to next slide. So in this field, uh, there are six areas uh, we need to focus on and we develop. So number one is the regulations. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I don't know how many vaccines you know the names you know, but all the vaccines you know, we have one items and distribute to the global. But however, each country has different kind of the regulation for the import and ex export. So uh, the also the logistics company uh, should be able to be aware of the local regulation. Since when we move the vaccine. Uh, we do not only apply for the vaccine because the packaging and the device to control, uh, we need to comply all the regulation by the packing materials and transportation material and also medical device, medical as well. Then also we need to, uh, the company has, has to be, you know, able to uh, the control the cost pressure since uh, for the special project, we have a lot of uh, 
you need to need to invest a lot of cost. That also infects the selling rate to the customer, but the customer also give a pressure to the price. Then um, all the medical items require the temperature control depends on the items. Even uh, you uh, for the normal fuels, they also should be controlled within the two to twenty-seven, you know, uh, the degrees. But the, for the vaccine, uh, it mostly you know the the minus low temperature control. So uh, I, I managed doing the Pfizer vaccine, which required the minus seventy degrees uh, the temperature control. So meaning need the complex logistic requirement for the air transportation and the, you know, the domestic uh, trucking and distribution. Then to manage the uncertainty uh, and also exceptional case, should be able to have the visibility of the, uh, the shipment and also control. So for the project, not, on, not only move the vaccine, but also we contain the GPS, the battery, so uh, we should be able to the, uh, the visibility of the movement by the GPS contained in the vaccine. Then of course, international growth, meaning when we success, you know, one the movement to the country, then you know, expand to other country. So those six areas are the focusing areas for in the healthcare industry. Move on next slide. So mostly in the healthcare, we start from the clinical trial and do the commercial, meaning the clinical trial is, you know, has some of the tissues and the human, uh, the part of the human body for the lab. So that mostly moved to Singapore and the US California for the test. Then everything passed, then it becomes the commercial and the volume is being increased. So this is the how we change. So the clinical is starting for the small volume, but the commercial is bulk and the large shipment. But mostly in the healthcare areas are uh, moved by air transportation because of the sense of sensitive of the time and trend and supply to the people. Move on. Next slide, please. Uh, so we need those kind of uh, the ability to meet the challenge from not only from the customer, but uh, to move the medical items with safe. So passion for the quality. Every step, uh, we need to comply the regulation also uh, also manage that items with the skillful knowledge. Otherwise, we carry the items, but we cannot use it. And also customer, the centric focus. Uh, when I did this project, I did not really deal only with the Pfizer company, but also the government and also the customs. So we must be focused, we must be the you know, customer focus. Customer means not only the supplier of the, the vaccine, but also the government and the people. And the innovative technologies. Since the situation is changed, you know, every time, then, mm, you know, no more the medicals, they require only the minus 20 degrees, but uh, for the specific items, you know, require the you know, less than 70, minus 70 degrees, but I didn't really realize that Korea has such kind of you know, facility, but in the Pyeongtaek area, which is a uh, uh, 70 kilometers you know, south from the Seoul, has the low temperature control warehouse that contains all the vaccine, you know, import from the you know other other countries, then supplies to all the Korea GEO. And also, you know, have the people and process meeting with the progress of the supplying to the people uh, each step. And of course, we need to have the global scale. Move on to next slide, please. So this is how we move from the overseas, uh, the storage side, 
uh, international transportation, local distribution, and supply to the patient. It's all the temperature control and the visibility control and the regulation control. Then we can give the shot to the patient. Move on, next slide, please. So, most important for the healthcare is the temperature to air freight, since the manufacturer is not placed in the old country. Uh, so, for the case of the Pfizer, the, uh, the manufacturer was located in the Euro Belgium process. So, we carry that uh, to Cologne in Germany, then use our own freight and uh, move to Incheon. Move on to the next slide, please. Then we focus on uh, we focus on you know the quality of the product and uh, our divisions. You know uh, we do manage all the exceptional cases and then communicate in the real time uh, from the manufacturer side to the patient side as well. So most important for uh, this area is the quality management. So we do uh, the, our company had enough people to manage the quality, complying the local regulation and global regulations. Right? So that is so you know that is the patient driven, uh, the supply chain to the patient you know century and also the customer. Next slide. And also uh, because of global. Uh, distribution we do have the control tower in the uh in the region so it's 24 hours controlled by uh, the us and europe and asia by different time zone so we do, we did communication with you know, all the people in the same time as earlier then the data was feed by gps in the vaccine side i will show how the packaging was and you know, looks like then what was it what was the inside of the package for the vaccine Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, you know, basically the pack, uh, the first solution for the healthcare is the packaging, meaning not only the packing, but also transportation uh, as well. So we need to qualify the shipping solutions for the packaging. Uh, we can think very simply that, okay, we just put in the refrigerator, then move the refrigerator, to uh, from origin to the destination, but we, we do have a challenge such as the electric city co you know connections and the size of uh, size of the the goods by uh, the big size of uh, big size of the refrigerators and also the regulation of moving the battery and electric cities and such you know other items. So. Uh, we we decide to have the passive temperature control, bring which which is uh, bring the dry ice in, into the box, and uh, the one package was the 30 kg, and the real vaccine was only five you know five kg, which can uh, give a shot to eight thousand people, but to carry that vaccines, uh, had to put. 20 kg of dry ice and can maintain minus 70 degree for nine to 10 days. But that was based on the, the temperature of the outside from 15 degree to 25 degree. So we also had to arrange uh, the temperature control truck. Then can then can keep the nine days. Otherwise, in the hot summer season. Uh, can be reduced to seven days. Or uh, in winter winter season, the vaccine can be frozen. Then the, the then the quality of the vaccine uh, will be will not be you know able to uh, uh, inject to the people. Then in this you know, the environment to control uh, should have the you know the temperature monitoring device, which is the GPS, also contain the battery. And you know, comply to DG regulation. So those kind of the packing solutions was the basic uh, uh, 
basic solution to comply to the healthcare industry, especially for the vaccines. Move on, next slide. So different IMs, you know, require different you know, range of the temperature. So normally, in uh, in general, um, medications, the refrigerator is you know, two plus five, eight degrees. But the protein related to the IEMs require less than, uh, I mean, require a minus minus degree. So the vaccine is a protein. So virus range is below zero degrees. So when you look at the right side of the slide, uh, right side of the slide, different items require uh, different heat sensitive and frozen uh, froze sensitive. So vaccine was right side of the button. Move on to next slide, please. So uh, as I say, the quality and the you know the capability of the managing complex product then also the complex portfolio and the global footprint are the main area uh, we are focusing on next slide so those are the areas the document model uh, to comply the regulation and training for the people to be ready able to uh, handle even uh, the operation steps that they should be certified to, you know, handle the dangerous goods. The vaccine, also the battery and the dry ice, they are, you know, to uh, the quantified as the dangerous goods, as the class nine. Then the event management is to be able to, you know, manage also exceptional case and capital management. Since uh, depends on the requirement from the government, we have, you know, pretty much a you know, high number of the vaccine, then uh, should be able to supply the air and the tracking to carry uh, the certain number of the vaccine to the country. So sometimes we carry uh, around two to you know three tons of the vaccine, but as the maximum, we carry you know twenty tons of the vaccine at once. And then also all the management. The dangerous goods require the OD process, you know, checking the damages and the temperature numbers, and also the, com the regulation comply. Then the change management risk, then the impact assessment and the action plan. So we had one cases. Uh, there was no any such kind of damage of the cartons, but uh, the temperature was the out of the range, meaning uh, te the temperature of the inside of the box was uh, was changed to 60 minus 60 degree. Then we allowed, then we you know brought up the QA, then do the inspection, then we supply. Or also even you know when we open the box, then uh, everyone must be to qualify the people to manage that. So those are the post, those are the process we have in place for the vaccine. Next slide, please. So those are number of the, uh, the vaccine. You know all the name of the vaccine, the Pfizer, Moderna, the AstraZeneca, and Janssen. So different vaccine require different uh, the temperatures. So the Pfizer is minus 60 to 90 degrees, then can contain the six month. But the Moderna and the Janssen just require minus 20 degrees. And the AstraZeneca is the most easy one because you know two to eight degrees for the six month. It's very common that we have, you know, we have enough uh, the warehouse to contain it. Next slide. And this is how we do uh, the storage wise in minus uh, 60 to 90 degrees for six months. Then uh, when we open the fire, then, you know, you know uh, we can Within the minus 25 to minus 15 degree, uh, we can store two weeks. But when we, uh, but when we open it in the normal temperature, two to eight degree, only five days. And uh, you know, once we open in the 30 degree, and only two hours. Meaning, when you reserve the vaccine, uh, the injection into the hospital, they. You must be in the hospital within two hours within two hours from the your reservation time. Otherwise, 
the vaccine cannot be uh, used for the people. Move on to the next slide, please. So this is how move from the uh, origin country and move to the warehouse and do the trucking, then comply to the the medical center. That's for the domestic because we do have the SK uh, produce the one of the vaccine in Korea, then comply to uh, uh, the Korea and then overseas. Then also import from the overseas, such as the Pfizer. Uh, we do have the international transportation and moving to the logistic center, which is the minus 70 degrees. Then we use the uh, the temperature control truck to the medical center. Next slide. And this is a normal container we use for the dry cargo. And next slide. This is another one for the pallet. And next slide, please. Uh, for the temperature control, uh, even the packaging was done well as the right side of the top, but we need a special uh, the container to carry, which which can uh, the control the temperature from uh, minus 15, uh, 2 degrees to minus 15 degrees. So those uh, number of the containers, the packaging and, you know, the truckings was used for this project. Next slide, please. And this is how we control the temperature by uh, system. Move on to the next slide, please. So I'll, I'll move very fast because we don't have enough time. So this is how the packing was look like. We have the vaccine, which is the 5 kg and has a GPS and uh, the plastic cases and put the dry ices. So total number of the packaging was around 30 kg uh, to carry the 5 kg of the vaccine. And because of battery and the dry eyes, this this was the classified as the plus nine, and comply the UN one eight four five and UN three four A one. Next, please. Yeah, and this is a real picture of the packaging for the vaccine. Next slide. And this is distribution network from Belgium to Kelan and Asia, Shenzhen, because the UPS has the intra-Asia hub, hub in Shenzhen, then connect to Incheon, then we distribute to all the GEOs. So even though uh, since the global company does not have the footprint in the Wulong Island or Jeju Island, but we also distribute to those areas as well. Next, next please. So this is how we carry it. From Europe, we use the RKN and container and, and the put the, uh, the vaccine in the container and uh, to control the temperature. And next, please. And we import it and we carry it. And as you can see, the you know, left side at the bottom, we did have uh, the police escort, the army escort. So I did a joke at the time. Uh, the army is not protecting uh, the country, but the you know protecting the vaccine only, because a lot of people just you know come here and uh, to just uh, to escort the vaccine from airport to the medical center. And next slide. And this is how we inspect. This is the first human arrived in Korea and uh, to to the central medical center in Seoul. So I was I was you know managing all the process here, and the truck was you know control uh, in between your know, fifteen to twenty five degrees. Next slide, and this is how we you know unpack. So we we turn up the GPS and you know take out the dry ice and put the low temperature of the refrigerator until the people come to the center for the injection. Next, please. And this is the airport overview. 
Incheon Airport. Next slide. And this is the inside of the process. Since uh, for the medical device cannot go through the X-ray scan, so we had a special approval from the government to bypass all the process and you know, uh, you know move to the truck. Next, please. And this is how we dispute and move as the milk run. Next, please. And this is a process of you know uh, moving the uh, vaccine from origin to the medical center in Korea by time. Next, please. Okay, yeah. So this is the the temperature control truck. So when we when the truck depart from the point A to the point B, then the temperature is checked by every ten minutes. Next, please. And this is how we stack. They even small uh, the security tape is torn. Then we do all the you know infections. Then we have the you know honeycomb cushions uh, to minimize uh, the pressure in between the you know vaccines when we move uh, when we move from you know A to B. Next, please. Then this is how we escort. Even the media, they came here and check, you know, how we manage it. So, you know, we uh, there was the uh, police and army escort the truck uh, in front of the truck and then behind the truck. So we had to manage all the logistics as well. Next, please. And this is the POD. So because of the, you know, items, so biology carrying out certification we require. And the POD required and the temperature control required. We need to submit to the KFDA. Next, please. And this is the second case. We imported the ASCO from the facility, as I show in the map. The processing is bypassing all the X ray screening and the direct tender. Next, please. And this is how we carry it all the ceiling, all the truck by the logistics company and also government. Next. And this is how, how we escort. In the highway as well. Next, please. And this this is the, the warehouse uh, can control the low temperature at the 70 degrees. Next. And this is the same the POD. Next, please. And uh, at the last, uh, uh, at the end of the, this you know, presentation, I uh, want to introduce one of the, uh, the warehouse facilities, uh, which has uh, the natural gas in a cold and heating fusion system and can control the minus 162 degrees. So we invested uh, this warehouse uh, earlier than uh, once COVID, you know, happened, then we utilize this warehouse. So having this, uh, the slide, uh, I believe the logistics, we always, you know, uh, argue in between the invest, you know, chicken and egg, meaning, you know, invest and the business, but I believe you know we should invest first in the specific areas, you know, especially for the healthcare. Then we can bring the business, then grow the business. So uh, I hope you know everyone. Not, it's not because of the situation, but everyone uh, should be you know looking at the healthcare sectors very well. Then we can see more business opportunities. Also in the academic field, you know, we have in you know, a lot of area you know, to develop. So. Uh, I learned a lot. They express a lot to the people. Then you know, still keep saying that the healthcare is a, one of the area we need to grow for the future. Then also the area, the business in the future. Next. So this is the warehouse look like. It's very big warehouse. Next, please. Yeah. 
And when we move to the vaccination center, we, we use the small refrigerator uh, to keep the vaccine until the patient comes for the infection. There is a control tower in the logistic centers to control the shipment and also temperatures. Next. So this is the end of the slide. So having this project, my grandmother, grandmother she's 97 years old. She also got the Pfizer vaccine in, in the vaccine and also I, I, I also had you know the vaccine three times and the two times of the vaccination was uh, the Pfizer so uh, I was very proud of this project leading and learned a lot then you know happy to share with you about this so uh, it's, it's been said that you know we use this Christ for the business but someone should do should someone should manage it for the people and the industry so this is the, my the last word for this presentation thank you thank you so much dr kim for the very informative and interesting presentation i think the story is very very um intriguing and we can see that how much effort you're putting in leading this project thank you so much so